Introduction Soups or soup is a flavoured liquid eaten with a spoon and is usually served as an entree. Can be served as cocktail party food, in shot glasses, appetizer, commonly served in espresso cups, main course, dessert, for breakfast. It is usually named after the main ingredient. For example, pumpkin soup. Soups can be served hot or cold, clear or stew-like, thick or thin. Soup can be served any time of the day. It can be small snack type serve or it can be a main meal in itself. Thickening agents used in soup production, roux, rice, pasta, vegetable puree, potato, pulses or beans. Clear soup. Consomme clear soup is made by taking a well-flavored stock and clarifying that stock so only a clear liquids remains. To clarify a stock is to remove all impurities that might be in the stock in form of small particles of flesh or congealed blood. The method of clarifying is simple. Trap the particles in a bonding of protein, take egg white and mix with a small portion of very lean mincemeat. Aromatics are normally added to this mix like so a onions, carrots. Mix egg white thoroughly into meat mixture and place into cold stock, bring slowly to the boil. While the mixture is coming to the boil do not disturb or stir the mixture. As the liquid heats up all the protein will bond together and float to the top as a raft. As a raft floats on water so will this meat raft float. Do not allow liquid to boil rapidly as this may cause the raft to break up and contaminate the liquid. The object is to allow the meat to cook to extract as much food value and flavor as possible from the ingredients. The impurities will become trapped in the congealed protein structure of the egg white and minced meat and this is how the liquid becomes clear. This clear liquid is now served as a consomme. Broths All cultures would have a broth style soup in their culinary culture. Broths are the simplest of soups to make in that very little other processing needs to be carried out on the food. Simplest is to place all things in pot and simmer until all is cooked. Problems that arise is that some ingredients may need to cook more than others and some need to cook less. In a broth all ingredients should still be identifiable when cooked. To overcome the fact that some ingredients might cook quicker than others ingredients are placed into the pot at different stages of cooking. Puree ingredients are cooked in quality stock to a point where they are very soft and then put through a food processor to liquidize all ingredients. Fluidity is adjusted with more liquid or gentler simmering to allow for reduction in liquid. Cream soups These soups are generally starch thickened and have a portion of cream added at the end of the cooking process just before the soup is served. The cream adds a smooth richness to the flavor of the soup. Bisque Bisque is a seafood style of soup that is of French origin. There are many seafood style soups that evolved from cooking scraps of flesh and body shells of crustacean from the day's catch. Bisque from Bay of Biscay in northern France. The flavor is extracted from the shell of the crustacean then adding extra after the base flavor is achieved. Flour can be used to thicken liquid. Variation is American chowders that can have milk added as part of the liquid used that give a creamy consistency without adding cream. Cold soups Some soups like leek and potato soup which is served hot in winter time has a summertime version that is served cold as Vichy soys. Summer version may be thinner in nature but is essentially the same ingredients. Gazpaccio is another summer soup served cold and in the winter is tomato and vegetable soup. Summer version may be a little thinner and slightly more acidic but all other ingredients would be same. Our ingredient preparation Ingredient preparation will vary recipe to recipe. All ingredients will have to be prepared in some way similar to the following. Vegetables washed, cut to specific requirements. Meats may have to be cut and blanched, add or sautéed. Bean or legumes soaked prior to cooking. Noodles softened prior to addition. The execution of any plan is defined by how well the plan is written. A recipe is just a plan on how to cook food. If the recipe does not include all steps and procedures then it is not a good recipe. A good recipe will describe exactly how the ingredients are to be prepared to meet the requirements of the dish. Store soups to enterprise requirements Follow enterprise cooling procedures for soups when cooling soups it is important to apply the 2 hour 4 hour rule. The two quarters hour rule cooling food to be observed when preparing large quantities of food to be cooled down and stored before further use. A food business must when cooling cooked potentially hazardous food cool the food within two hours from 60 C to 21 C and B. Within a further four hours from 21 C to 5 C. 
Soups produced from animal products will be high in protein so will need to be cooled rapidly to minimize possibility of bacteria growing to a dangerous level. Soups thickened with starch are liable to fermentation if kept warm for extended periods. When cooling product needs to be placed into shallow containers with a wide surface area. If not rapid cooling equipment is available then the wide shallow containers will allow the heat to dissipate quicker. Stirring occasionally helps to let the heat out and prevents skins from forming on surface. When room temperature has been reached the product should be placed into refrigeration until a temperature of 5 degrees Celsius has been recorded. Then the products can be placed into larger storage containers for better storage. All products must be labeled with name and date of manufacture. Soups can be kept fresh in cool environment for up to three days, if longer storage is required and freezing is required. Store soups appropriately in correct containers. All containers that are used for storage of food must be of food grade standard. Stainless steel is best but good quality food grade plastic container are acceptable. Plastic containers must be in good condition with no cracks or scratches. Containers must be able to be sealed easily and securely. Soups can be stored in containers larger than sauces. Soups are best stored in smaller containers. Small containers for soups allows for portions to be removed from controlled environment and heated to serving temperature without too much being wasted. The size of the storage containers will be determined by the rate of usage 1 liter 5 liters 10 liters. How much sauce is required in a service period? It is the continual reheating and cooling that causes problems with contamination. Label soups correctly. Labeling of product reduces the possibility of confusion. Allows for better stock control. Rotation of stock through storage area. What is required on a label for in-house storage, name of product, date of manufacture, name of person responsible for manufacture, date of freezing, if frozen, recommended, use by date, any allergenic ingredients. If the product is going to be sold outside of premises then more information is required. Ensure appropriate storage equipment conditions are maintained storage of stocks and sources all soups are capable of going off high protein soups are capable of having bacteria growing at an alarming rate high wet starch products are capable of breeding harmful bacteria if not managed correctly equipment used to store foods containers for food refrigeration for maintaining environments below specific temperature facilities where food is prepared also need to be considered in this equation Containers for food storage, need to be of a washable material, must be impervious to moisture, must not be scratched or damaged. Refrigeration for maintaining environments below specific temperature, cool rooms and freezers, air conditioning for dry storage in high climatic environments. Regular maintenance of these pieces of equipment are vital for efficient operating. Cool rooms need to operate at 5 degrees Celsius or below. Freezers need to operate at minus 18 degrees Celsius minus 18 or below. Dry store need to be kept at 21 degrees Celsius in warmer climates. Prepare and maintain correct thawing of frozen soups. Products that have been frozen need to thaw before they can be used. Product cannot be left outside of a controlled environment for extended periods of time else bacteria can multiply to dangerous levels. This high level of bacterial growth can cause adverse reaction in the consumers of this food product. To minimize bacterial growth control needs to be maintained while food is thawing. The rate of thawing can be controlled if frozen product is placed in the cool room and allowed to thaw over period of time, 24 to 48 hours temperature does not rise above 5 degrees Celsius but time is extended, planning needs to be in place for this to happen. Thawing can take place in a microwave process is continuous product is stirred during process to quicken rising of temperature. When product is in a fluid state the temperature raising process is continued rapidly to above 60 degrees Celsius or to the required temperature above. Thawing is done safely with product thawing in the cool room. Thawing is quicker if product if it is frozen in thinner profiles. This means not freezing in bowl shapes. Thinner profiles will thaw quicker than thicker profiles. Ensure correct storage of soups after service after service. Many problems come from this question. What do I do with the leftover? Our answer, throw it away, discard leftover product. Why? Less chance of product being contaminated. Following the principle of the more times something is reheated, the greater the possibilities of bacteria causing a problem. This is especially so in warmer climates.
When product is made then it should be portioned into unit sizes that will eliminate problems with reheated product being left over. Basic rules to follow, do not place leftover product on top of fresh product when replenishing supplies, always place new product into clean container, never into dirty containers, if product has been reheated for service, discard at end of service period, never reheat more product than what is planned to be used, store in smaller portions to allow for shorter orders, normal storage size may be for 20 persons, allow for production of some smaller sizes of 5 or 10 serves portions. Rule number 1. Never reuse preheated soups. Reconstitute soups for service. Follow correct heating of soups to enterprise standards. Reheating soups. Any soup that needs to be reheated simply needs to be reheated as quickly as possible by taking it to a temperature above 75 degrees C within one hour. A better standard is to bring all soups back to boil 100 C when reheating starch thickened soups starch thickened soup have a high possibility that they will burn when placed back on the heat to be reheated. They must be stirred constantly or heated in a steam jacket cooker. Modern oven multi-use with steam injection will allow these soups to be reheated in trays in a steam environment. The burning is when the bottom of the pot becomes too hot for the starch and coloring takes place. If starch thickened soups are to be reheated over naked flame then they must be stirred regularly to avoid sticking and burning. Ensure quality of hot holding of soups is to enterprise standards temperature control soups have to be reheated above 75 degrees Celsius to comply with food safety requirements. Where possible soups should be boiled when reheated to minimize any adverse bacterial activity. Hot holding after the soup has been reheated a temperature of more than 60 degrees Celsius must be maintained for the duration of the service period. Soup is never too hot when it is eaten but that is not an issue. The time it takes for the soup to cool is not enough for the bacteria to grow to dangerous levels. If the product falls below the 60 degrees Celsius then the 2 hour, 4 hour rule must be implemented. 